Let's let's go to humidity control then, because I had another comment on my YouTube because I often talk Bosch. And humidity control, how big of a responsibility is your comfort system to solving your humidity issues? Because that was what the, the comment was about. It was almost like it's not really responsible for that. If it happens to, it's okay. My understanding was it is responsible because most people don't have an alternate way to control humidity. Well, I think that's like a tricky thing because it can be like a bigger problem with these newer houses when things are tighter in that, you know, and then you're not having runtime. If you're not running your system, you're not dehumidifying, period. So I think like ancillary dehumidification is becoming like more and more almost like a requirement especially in humid climates, right? Um, but if you look at, I actually had a discussion with somebody on LinkedIn today, Tim Distasio. I don't know if you've been following him at I'm all. I'm not familiar with him, no. Um, Michael Hausch wrote a tech tip about how do you size a dehumidifier by using the latent load and basically not what dehumidifier manufacturers say is use square footage, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we were kind of going back and forth and we were talking about, you know, you size it. There's like a formula to size it to for latent capacity, but your latent capacity in a lot of places is not actually your design conditions for air conditioning. In right. places like the Midwest, it's like shoulder season. It might be cooler. Like my design conditions here are 89 degrees, um, you know, outdoor temperature is the 1%, but my design conditions for humidity the one percent humidity is might be 79 or 80 percent or 80 degrees outside i'm sorry um so it, it's actually when it's cooler out so you need to kind of account for that that's a good point because when your ac in the middle of summertime we have a lot of humidity here but ac is running all the time so you have the effect of the dehumidification of the evaporator coil but when it comes to the time we're entering now actually uh fall you'll have humid, mild temperatures. So, I mean, the only way to really, I mean, here, here let me diverge for a second and ask you this. Multi-stage variable systems, they ramp down, they run longer. They run they'll, So they'll run longer when there's less call for them to run, at least they'll run longer than a single stage system. With these multi-stage systems, when they're running at this low speed, low airflow, are you concerned, and this is, it's kind of not exactly the same idea we're just talking about. Are you concerned about airflow in the periphery of the system when it's running at low speed constantly? Meaning? Meaning that your ductwork is X size, your system capacity and airspeed has gone down with the no. same ductwork. No, that's one of the first things I learned um, from ACA is, and, you know, uh, I took like an online uh, e-learning thing with Jack Rise, their old trainer before mm -hmm. Ed Janowak. And that was one of the first slides that he had on the screen is there's a there's scores of things to worry about when designing a duct system. And low velocity through a duct uh, trunk line is not one of them. So Interesting. Yeah. Was there a further explanation on it or just that was don't it. need to worry about it? Don't worry. Man, I wish there was one more line about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I could see that with low velocity, it's assuming that there's not much load, mm -hmm. at least sensible load. So if you're treating an overall humidity problem, I guess it will end up equalizing. And I don't know, it's interesting right there.